Yeah! It's another video! I can't wait to get started! Oh my goodness, what am I... <laughs> Is this a dog with sunglasses eating your food? Dude, you're like... <laughs> I know! Yeah, yeah, you're too cool, man. Alright, sure. Okay, I don't think you were supposed to come like that. I think somebody from Mr. War's crew did something and yeah modify that picture. I don't think that's what you guys have in your books. Oh my goodness. Cool. Well, what are we doing today, Mr. Wara? I don't know. I'm talking to myself. No, you're not. Yes, you are. Oh, no. No, we are doing problem solving. That's what math's all about, right? Math wouldn't be any fun. If there wasn't a math problem, it wouldn't be math, you know? Anyway, we're doing lesson 1.9. Look at our topic today. Our topic is <clears throat> problem solving. Yes, we just said that. And, but it's going to have to do with multiplication and division. That's right. Multiplication and division. So, what's our learning target? What are we going to learn today, Mr. Warrell? We're going to be, yes, looking at that essential question. And it says, how can you use this strategy, solve a simpler problem to help you solve a division problem? Well, you know how this works. We can't really do that, Mr. War, unless you know. That's right. To unlock the problem. That's right. It's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Oh, now, it says Mark works at an animal shelter. To feed nine dogs, Mark empties eight 18-ounce cans of dog food into a large bowl. If he divides the food equally among the dogs, how many ounces of food will each dog get? And it says, use the graphic organizer below to help you solve the problem. So let's go back and revisit the problem. We just read it. To feed nine dogs, this is Mark empties eight 18 ounce cans of food. Well, that lets me know that if each can is 18 ounces, I have eight of them. I'm going to need to find the total ounces of food first before I can figure out how I'm going to divide that food equally among the nine dogs. And of course, then that question, what we're trying to find, how many ounces of food will each dog get? All right. Well, let's go down below and take a look at our graphic organizer. Ooh, look at that. What do we have here? It says, read the problem. It says, what do I need to find? Well, I need to find. That's right. I think I heard somebody out there. Yeah, we need to find the number of ounces of dog food that each dog will get. Cool. What's our next question there, Mr. Wara? Well, it says, what information do I need to use? Okay, I need to use the number of blank, the number of blank in each can and the number of dogs that need to be fed. So I need to use the number of cans, cans of food, the number of ounces, yeah, in each can and the number of dogs that need to be fed. Okay, well, how will I use the information? Well, I can blank to find the total number of ounces then I can solve a simpler problem to blank that total by 9. So we were using solve a simpler problem, so this is for that multiplication. So I can multiply uh, to find the total number of ounces because we can take as there's 18 ounces in each can, and that way we can multiply by 8. But then it says then to solve a simpler problem to, and we'll get into that, we're going to divide that total by 9. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's come over here to solve the problem. It says first multiply to find the total number of ounces of dog food. Okay, 8 times 18. Let's do that. 18 times 8, 64, because I love my doubles. 8 times 1 is 8 plus 6 would be 14. So end up with 144. Of course, we know that's going to be ounces. That's right, ounces right there. Woohoo! Now, to find the number of ounces each dog gets, I'll need to divide. That's right. I'm going to take 144 and divide that by 9. Then they have the little gray square. So I guess uh, we don't have to really answer that yet because we have another part. It does say to find the quotient, which we know is the answer in a division problem, I break 144 into two simpler numbers that are easier to divide. Ooh, I like that idea. And what are they doing here? Aha! They're taking that 144. And they're saying 144 is the same as 90 plus something. So I just need to figure, what do I need to add to 90 to get 144? Well, that's a nice easy one, isn't it? Wouldn't that just be 54? Because 90, yeah, you could put that 5, 4, we'd have 4, and then 14. So I could actually do that. It's a little bit of mental math. Okay, so I have 90 plus 54, which is the same as that 144 divided by 9. Okay, now, oh, I see. I was thinking to myself, why are they doing this? 
Now I see why they're doing this. They're doing this because it's much simpler to solve this problem this way because 90 and 54 are both multiples of 9. So now by doing that, it'd be really easy just to put our 90 here. We're just going to bring that on down. And then the 54, we're just going to bring that down here. Look how beautiful that is. 90 divided by 9 is really easy to do, right? That's just going to be 10. See, and 54 divided by 9 is 6. That's one of our basic facts, right, on our times table. So 10 plus 6 is equal to 16. Wow, that was a really easy way to do that. So by using a simpler numbers, we were actually able to solve that. And you could always check. I'm going to write right over my problem. 16 times 9. So we can always go back and check because you can take the quotient, multiply that by the divisor right here with my really weird looking arrow. So that's 54. Carry the 5. There's 9 plus 5. 14. And voila. Woohoo. And oh, we have our statement down here. So each dog gets what? No, 16 ounces of food. I almost said 144. No. So that means each dog gets 16 ounces of food. Okay. Must be the right amount of food that he needs. Cool. Let's go to another problem here. It says try another problem. Okay. It's not giving us a nice little graphical organizer like we did with the blanks. Now it's giving us this. We can still do it. Here we go. Michelle is building shelves for her room. She has a plank 137 inches long that she wants to cut into seven shelves of equal length. The plank has jagged edges. So she will start by cutting two inches off each end. How long will each shelf be? Woo, there's a doozy of a problem, huh? Now we look more closely and we can see that, ah, she has that plank. It's actually got a length of 137 inches. She wants to take that and cut it into seven shelves, but of the same length. Okay, the plank has jagged edges, so we know she's going to start, she's actually going to cut two inches off each end. So that's going to come off before she does any work with making her shelves. So you're going to take that off first. So how long will each shelf be? Okay, so we have to think to ourselves when we read the problem, what do I need to find? Well, the nice thing about what do I need to find is usually in the question, right? I need to find, yeah, the length of each shelf. So I need to find the length of each shelf. Cool. That's pretty simple. Basic. So now let's go down to what information do I need to use? Well, here I need, I definitely need to know uh, how much I'm going to cut off each end. Okay. I will also need to know how long is the plank before I do any cutting. And also I'm going to need to know, you know, how many shelves does Michelle want to, uh, to make. Okay. And there's different ways. Of course, you could have phrased that, but that information I would need to know to solve. How will I use this information? Okay, well, that's a great question. Um, well, first, how will I use the information? Well, first, I, I need to, I'm going to need to cut off those two inches. So first, I will subtract the two inches from the length of the plank. Now, don't be confused. This is two inches off each side. So it really, in reality, I'm going to put in here times two. Okay, because I need to take two inches off each side. I didn't write that down, but that's what I intend to do. Then um, I will take that amount and divide it by seven. And I should say remaining amount. Okay, then I'll take that remaining amount and divide by seven because it was seven shelves. Now, this is what we did in the previous problem and tends to follow the pattern that we need. We might need to make a simpler problem. So if this is difficult to, to divide, then it may look for simpler numbers. So if, and I'm just going to say, if the division is uh, difficult, then I'll use simpler numbers. And I know that's like a lot of writing there. It's just really making sure that I understand the steps I'm going to take. Now let's take a look at our, our solve the problem. Well, we want to start off with our 137 inches. Now, remember, we're going to be subtracting two from one side. We're going to subtract another two from the other side. I'm doing that. So that's going to equal, that's right, 133 inches. So that was that first step. I said how I was going to use this information. That's the first thing I'm going to do. So now I have 133, and I'm going to divide that by 7. And the previous problem had like that little square there. Now, looking at that, I'm not saying that we couldn't solve that, but there's a way that we can make this in a simpler problem. Last time, we had two numbers that were like multiples. 
So if we were to actually rethink this as 70 plus 63, you can see that 70 would be a multiple of 7 and 63 would be a multiple of 7. And that's going to help us out here because look how much simpler this will be now. So now what we can do is we can divide each one of these by the 7. So we could say 70 divided by 7 plus 63 divided by 7. And you see now by that 7, both of these numbers are multiples. Makes this really easy. 10 plus 9, which equals 19. So the 19 then times 7 should get us right back. 63, there's our 13. There we go, 133 inches. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Boy, that worked out really, really nice. Okay, now, is there any more? Oh, we do have our statement down below. So each shelf will be 19 inches long. Okay, is there anything else down here? Explain how the strategy you used helped you solve the problem. We talked about that, right? How we made a simpler problem. So by breaking up the 133K into 70 and 63, both were multiples of 7, but by taking the 70, what made that really, really easy is because it's just a multiple of 10. So 70 is a multiple of 10, makes numbers a little bit easier to use. So that's why that made that a little bit easier. And it's, again, it's helping us understand the distributive property, which is what we use there. Okay, cool. Oh no, this is the end of the video. No! It's got to be over already. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh! I knew, I knew. I just love math. I just, I can keep doing math. I don't know. It's just, it's so fun. Anyway, and I love when numbers all come together. It's a really, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing, my friends. Now, don't worry. We'll have another one coming up very soon. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, please become a sub. Be part of the team. Yeah. Okay. Now, my friends, live long and prosper.